I'm Dr. Pamela Ruig, Extension Mount Quality Veterinarian for the University of Wisconsin-Madison. And today, as part of our continuing series on how to use on-farm culture to improve mastitis treatments, we're going to be talking about how to make specific diagnoses using the medias that we've um, cultured the milk on. Now remember, the purpose of on-farm culturing is to determine the appropriate treatment for an appropriate case. And the reason we're doing that is because not all cases of mastitis benefit from antibiotic therapy and we want to make sure we use antibiotics appropriately on a farm. Today as part of this series we're going to be talking about using these media to identify Staphylococcus species. <music> So today in this video, we're going to be talking about how to identify Staphylococcus bacteria on our agars. Now, brief review, staph are a frequent cause of both subclinical and clinical mastitis, but some of them can also normally grow on the skin. There's many Staphylococci, and we normally divide them into what we call coagulase negative Staphylococci, which are associated with mild mastitis and are considered to be opportunistic bacteria or importantly, Staph aureus, which is an important cause of mastitis, is considered contagious and can spread cow to cow and is often not normally responsive to therapy. So part of what we're doing when we're identifying Staphylococci using culturing is to differentiate between those two types of Staphylococci. So let's get right to the meat of what we're here to discuss today. Let's talk a little bit about the characteristics of Staphylococci as they grow on our augers. Now Staphylococci are a gram-positive organism. So that means they grow on medias that support gram-positive growth. When they grow on these medias, they're usually a fairly small colony and they're usually light colored, generally somewhat whitish or occasionally slightly yellowish. So um, when we are trying to identify them, we have to determine which type of media we're using and where would we expect them to grow. Now in this series, we've been dealing with growth on biplates, triplates, or quadplates. If you're using a biplate, the first thing you have to recognize is, is the red media a blood auger, which supports the growth of all kinds of gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria or factor media, which supports only growth of gram-positive. Staphylococci will grow on either of those types of media. They'll grow both on blood auger and factor media. If you've got a biplate, your diagnosis would be you've got a gram-positive organism, and that's as far as you can get when using a biplate. So your Staphylococci will grow on the blood auger or factor media you diagnose them as gram-positive, but you wouldn't be able to go much further than that. Now, if you're using a triplate, Staphylococci will grow only on the blood auger or the factor media. They won't grow on the strep media, such as the MTKT that we've been using to illustrate this series. If you do see growth on factor media and not on other medias, it may be a staph. And then if you're using a quad plate, they'll grow on the blood auger and the factor only. In no instance would Staphylococci grow on either McConkie's media or a strep-specific media. After you've identified growth on either the blood auger, if you're using that, or the factor media, if you're using that, your next step is going to be try to try to differentiate do I have growth of coagulase negative staph or should I suspect that I've got growth of a staph aureus? The, the, the easiest and first step in determining this is to take a look at your plate and try to detect if you've got hemolysis occurring around the colony. Hemolysis basically means that the bacteria have characteristics that allow them to kind of eat up the red blood cells in that media. And as a consequence of the bacteria using up or eating up the red cells in the media, you get a clear zone around the colony. 
those clear zones around the colonies on either your factor or your blood auger are usually caused by staph aureus but they can be caused by a few other coagulase negative staphs which themselves are often associated with more chronic types of mastitis. If you have a colony that exhibits what we call hemolysis, the clear zone around it, it should be tested for the presence of coagulase. Now coagulase testing is a fairly simple test and it's used as a practical confirmation of, the, um, of Staph aureus. It can be done on a farm, but you should do this after training by your local veterinarian. And if you do have a milk sample that has a hemolytic staph, we would recommend that you submit that for confirmatory testing in a real milk quality laboratory because finding a staph aureus is going to result in decisions that you want to be absolutely confident about making. All right, let me just sum up how we identify staphylococcus. Staphylococcus species will grow on either blood auger or factor media, but they will not grow on McConkie's media or the strep media. It's very important to differentiate Staphylococcus aureus from coagulase negative staphs as they behave differently in the cow. As you probably know if you're viewing this video, Staph aureus is difficult to treat and it's often non-responsive, especially if those cases are chronic. In contrast, these coagulase negative staphs often have high rates of spontaneous cure and are often responsive to short duration therapies. Now for follow up on either staph aureus or coagulase negative staph, review our video series on managing mastitis, the pathogen series, and we have specific videos for both coagulase negative staph and staph aureus. Music